The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, a necessity for gracious living. While many gamers of a certain age demographic often consider this title to be the greatest Zelda game of all time, what fewer people will be aware of is that Nintendo would develop and publish a direct follow-up. When I say this, I am not referring to the legendary Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64, nor am I referring to A Link Between Worlds on the 3DS, a game that takes place directly after A Link to the Past and featuring the same top-down map of Hyrule which was included in the 16-bit gem. In fact, speaking of A Link Between Worlds, Nintendo are so desperate for this game to be considered the direct sequel to A Link to the Past that in Japan, A Link to the Past is known as Triforce of the Gods and A Link Between Worlds is known as Triforce of the Gods 2. Yet, there is still another video game out there which is linked even closer to the Super Famicom Classic than even the 3DS game it's heavily inspired. In fact, not only was this one linked to the famous 16-bit Zelda game, but it was yet another 16-bit Zelda game which could be experienced on the 16-bit hardware. So, what on earth is going on here? And how have so many people missed out on this one? I am Lady Decade and this is the story of the literally lost A Link to the Past sequel, an official Zelda game that Nintendo actively chooses to keep from us. If you lived through the glorious 16-bit console wars and lived on the Nintendo side of the fence, then there is a strong possibility that you was fortunate enough to own A Link to the Past. This title built on everything that the original NES game had previously presented and delivered a deeper, richer, more graphically impressive experience that has now earned its place in history as one of the all-time greats. Out of those who were fortunate enough to play through this game in its heyday, many would dream of a time when they would get to revisit Hyrule again on the Super Nintendo, but unfortunately, this was a dream for most that would never be fulfilled. However, if you happened to be a Legend of Zelda fan who lived in Japan, who not only owned a Super Famicom, but then also invested in an additional piece of hardware, then the opportunity for another romp through A Link to the Past's Hyrule on the Super Nintendo would actually become a reality. The game I am referring to would not actually see release on hardware until March of 1997, a period in which many gamers would have already moved on to the Nintendo 64. Loyalists of the 16-bit hardware though would gain access to a game which is known as BS Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets, a follow-up to A Link to the Past that could only be played by those who owned the Super Famicom Satellaview add-on. Now, if you have been following this channel for a while, then you may very well have already seen my deep dive retrospective covering the history of this quirky console add-on. But for those of you who simply need a too long didn't read description of this device, it was essentially a satellite modem peripheral released in 1995 that let games in Japan download games, magazines and other media satellite broadcasts that were provided by the Japanese company Saint Giga. Within this previous upload, I promised some individual videos covering certain games from this platform's library, with Ancient Stone Tablets functioning as the first Satellaview game that I shall be covering. One of the most glorious aspects of Ancient Stone Tablets is that it's effectively the pseudo-sequel to the legendary A Link to the Past. In fact, the game features the same engine, the same recognisable characters, gameplay and 
even overworld. However, this second offering introduces its own original story, dungeons, mini games, and side quests. Essentially, this is more a link to the past greatness to consume. Mm, well, it would be consumable if Nintendo actually re-released this game for gamers to play because, as things stand, Ancient Stone Tablets in an official capacity has sadly been lost to time. Or behind the door of the Nintendo Vault, it kind of depends on how you look at this situation, I guess. Almost like modern day DLC packs today, Ancient Stone Tablets was delivered on the Satella View episodically, and gamers would have to download episodes via St. Giga's satellite broadcasts, then store them on their memory pack. The action in these episodes would differ from A Link to the Past in that each episode was timed and could only be played for 60 minutes. Throughout these experiences, in-game events would occur at set intervals, and as players would take various actions in-game, players would then be rewarded with points. The aim would essentially be to acquire as many points within a time limit as possible, a throwback mechanic that interestingly has more in common with an old-school arcade game than it does with the exploratory nature of a Zelda game. In fact, I would say that a case could be made that shooting for a high score in Zelda games goes against everything that the Zelda series is usually about. So, bearing this in mind, it provides one of the many reasons why Nintendo may be choosing to keep this one from us. Anyway, with regards to these points, those who achieved scores they were proud of were able to submit them to Nintendo in exchange for real-life prizes. While the original version of this game is unfortunately lost to time, thankfully as usual on the information super highway, modders from the Legend of Zelda fan community have all of our backs covered and have gone out of their way to do what Nintendo don't. This has, in part, been made possible because lots of the content that was broadcast on the Satellaview has been faithfully restored, using dumped material found on old memory packs that contained the game's original data. But sadly, even though most of the original game was restorable, one of the key original elements that made this game so unique was truly lost. You see, the game would use technology that was known as a sound link, meaning that games could be broadcast that featured fully orchestrated music and even decent sounding voice acting. Have a quick listen to this. The controls. First of all, please press start. This menu is called the subscreen. At the subscreen, the items you have just received will be displayed. If you press the L button at the subscreen, you will see today's objective. The tech you can hear here was known as Live Voice. This would see games such as Ancient Stone Tablets be paired with live voice acted drama, which would include narrators speaking directly to the player, providing plot exposition and hints. As for Ancient Stone Tablets, it would include voices for both Princess Zelda and Agena, with both of them guiding the player telepathically. As for this aspect of the game, this was the part that would get lost to time, as it was not recoverable from any of the old memory packs, as this part of the game would instead be held on the system's RAM. Therefore, it was not preserved like the rest of the game's data. How annoying! As you've likely noticed throughout this video in the original version of Ancient Stone Tablets, players would not play as Link, but instead as the avatar of the player's ID for the BSX Broadcasting System, who throughout the game would be consistently referred to by the voice acting simply as the Hero of Light. Both a male and female avatar was available, with the female avatar having long red hair and the male one being a cool tubular 90s dude who chooses to wear a baseball cap facing backwards. How very radical. So how does this Mondo individual 
fit into the A Link to the Past story, you may ask. Well, despite ancient stone tablets seemingly being missing from the official Zelda timeline published by Nintendo, at ancient stone tablets' time of release, it would have been given a story and an explanation of how it fit into the existing canon. Hyrule is now enjoying peace and tranquility. However, despite these good times, Zelda is suffering from dark recurring nightmares, which she believes are a premonition of evil. One day though, her and Agana, the younger brother of the wise man Sahasrala from A Link to the Past, witness a strange light in the east. Travelling to the source, they find a strange youth lying on the ground, who they note is wearing very unusual clothes indeed. Zelda learns that Agana and his brother have also sensed the same evil as her, and although Link has not yet returned to their land, this new youth they found is endowed with the courage to be the new Hero of Light. This plot serves as the backdrop for the first of the four episodes that would be broadcast, whereby only a section of Hyrule would be accessible. Players who completed the Ancient Stone Tablets episodes could carry over items obtained in the previous ones into the next episodic part of the adventure. This version of Hyrule also features new stores that were not located within A Link to the Past, such as the one that sells general goods and medicine, and interestingly, a rental store, whereby items can be lent to the Hero of Light, a feature that would be carried over to the 3DS many years later. There are even some new items like the gold potion, which can be obtained from the witch's hut, which not only restores health and magic, but can be used to charge spin attacks twice as fast and make them twice as strong. I assume this potion must be some sort of anabolic steroid. Earlier on in the video, I also mentioned timed events that occur over the hour of play. These, for example, include changes in weather that can cause NPCs to go inside their houses and for hostile enemies to appear in their place. Other events relate more to the story's plot, which is obviously told across the four episodes. While we have already covered the first episode, moving on to the second, a god protecting the Eastern Palace Temple informs Zelda that a horde of monsters are returning to the land and had killed his fellow guards at the temple. Agana convinces the Hero of Light to head to the temple, arming him with weapons and items, including a bottle containing a magic golden bee. This bee essentially functions as a new weapon, which can be unleashed to attack monsters in the temple. Throughout the episodes, the Hero of Light also tackles a dark dungeon that is hidden behind a waterfall and begins collecting mysterious tablets, hence the title, ancient stone tablets. Neither Agana nor his brother can work out what they are, so ask the hero to travel forth and collect more. Eventually, Agana locates the Book of Mudora, which can be used to translate the text on the tablets and brings us to the final of the four episodes. In the game's last chapter, it is revealed that the ancient text states that a sealed power, the Silver Arrows, are buried on the mountain. After lots more shenanigans involving books and tablets, it soon transpires that after all these years, Ganon's malice has somehow managed to keep his spirit alive, despite the destruction of his body by the end of A Link to the Past. Like A Link to the Past before it, Ancient Stone Tablets concludes with an epic battle against Ganon, whereby players take on the Demon King in an all-new version of Ganon's tower. Using the Silver Arrows, the Hero of Light is able to defeat Ganon once more. Regarding this overlooked game's original release, it was initially broadcast in Japan from March 1997 through to April 97. However, for gamers who missed it that time around, the game would be repeatedly broadcast many times between June of 97 right up until December of 1998, meaning it was in circulation simultaneously at the same time as Ocarina of Time was first available on the Nintendo 64. 
Now, earlier in this video I mentioned prizes for high scores, which begs the question, what exactly was on offer here? Well, the top five players with the highest ancient stone tablet scores each week would be sent memory packs as their prizes, allowing them to store more broadcast games. As highlighted earlier, whilst the voice work was not preserved, thankfully some in Japan had their VCRs running, hence how we can watch the original version of the game running today. While Nintendo has always withheld this game from us and never translated it to English, that has not stopped the fan community stepping up and doing it for us instead. In fact, the game is now even playable dubbed with English voice acting too, making this all the more interesting. The voice actress for Zelda for this fan project would actually be Kira Buckland, the same voice actress for 2B from Nia, and a ton of other anime and games, which is pretty epic actually for an effort by fans, wouldn't you say? This version of the game is now as close as we are ever going to get to playing the proper version of Ancient Stone Tablets, unless of course Nintendo decide to finally pull their finger out their arse. But frankly, I can't see that happening anytime soon. So I am Lady Decade and that was the official sequel to The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, the direct follow up to the classic game that was available to play on 16-bit hardware. Personally, considering how beloved and important The Legend of Zelda franchise is, it feels almost criminal that Nintendo do not provide modern gamers with a way of experiencing this. Especially when we consider that the Nintendo Switch's online Super Nintendo game library would function as the perfect home for this game, and give players a further reason to invest in what I believe is somewhat of an overpriced online service. Come on Nintendo, pull your finger out and give the West Satellaview games. We have already waited 25 years too long to play this one. Videos like this are in part made possible due to my lovely bunch of Patreon supporters. Speaking of whom, special thanks go out to William J. Scott III, Carl Thomas, Sebastian Velez, House of the Ted, Boyd Chan, Big Papa Pickles, J. O'Malley, Drone, Tebow Baggins, Sir Landry Does Gaming, Christopher Divieo, Richard Turnbull, Frank1982, Eric Hendricks, Anthony Ryan Bennett, Brent O'Hara, Stephen Quinn, Autumn Breeze, Timothy Hansma, Ryan Dacker, Dizzy Koala, Sandbox Larry, Awesome Jacket Dude, Triforce of Shadows, Johnny Holly, OPC, EmuMovies.com, PWND Games, Consoles, Accessories, Corey Uderkirk, Ben Harradine, Gasper Heller, Sedgmeister, and Ago, as well as all of the rest of all of my lovely patrons. Thank you all so much.